seems loud. I don't know. Uh, it's good to see everybody this morning uh, on this cold, blistery morning. It was, it was colder this morning when I woke up than what I thought it would be. And I was like, oh, no, people are not going to come because it's cold. And then I was like, wait, we're in Illinois. Never mind. Uh, so it's good to see everybody. We are glad you're here uh, as we get to worship the Lord this morning. It is an honor and a privilege to worship God. Uh, and so would you stand with us as we worship the Lord this morning? Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Church of the Nazarene. Am I on? Can you? Oh, good. Now I can hear me. Hey, um, it's cold. Have you noticed that? It's cold. I'm trying to figure out why I live in Illinois. But anyway, um, just a few announcements. This Saturday is District Team Day South at Salem Grace from 10 to 3. Next Sunday is Baptism Sunday. We've got some people getting baptized, which is a wonderful thing. And uh, Membership Sunday, too, which is also a wonderful thing. Uh, Friday, uh, Friday, February 4th is gather at the table, so we'll have our, we'll get back onto our normal rhythm for doing that, 
February 14th is Ash Wednesday, which means Easter is coming. Uh, and then finally, if you've not gotten your giving statement from the church yet, we'll have them at the end uh, in the back. If you need to get that, just see David and we'll get that to you. Okay. Can I pray for us before we continue with, with the service? Father, thank you for this church, these people, this cold day where we can be in, in a service where your love and your warmth just covers us. Thank you for that. Give us a great church service today. Bless Pastor David as he brings the message. And just make it a special day for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we continue the worship below this morning? In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And, and the, the dead, dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born. Then the Spirit lit the flame. Now, now this gospel truth of old shall not deal, shall not fade. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Praise the Father. Praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, 
praise forever to the King of kings. Praise forever to the King of kings. You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord? Amen. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord? It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Sing that one more time. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need is thy hand. 
faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest. Sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me. Dear God, we thank you today for your great faithfulness, for all you have done for us and all you will do for us, for the way that you work in our lives. Um, I pray that you would be with the rest of the service and uh, be with Pastor David as he preaches. Uh, speak to us through him. And let it be your words and not his that come out of his mouth. I also pray that you would just be with us uh, throughout the next week. Uh, so we can come back next Sunday and worship you again. Amen.
Well, it's good to be with you all again this morning. <clears throat> I searched all week for a bumper video for this series, and I couldn't find one. And I am not creative enough to make one. Um, and so that transition there is usually not as uh, long or strange or empty. Um, but we, if you are with us for the first time, uh, or first time this year, we are in a series um, called Stewardship More Than Giving, you know, and, and at least for the two years I've been your pastor, um, I like to start January out with uh, our, our mind in the right place, and that is giving what we have the entire year to God. Um, and more often than not, people think stewardship is money, uh, and it is, but stewardship is far more than that. God asks and, and commands and requires so much more than just your pocketbook for us to do what God wants us to do for the kingdom. And so while we were not in person last week, Eric and I thank you again to Eric. Eric came in on Saturday, um, and we pre-recorded the message to post to Facebook and YouTube last week because it was a little bit snowy and cold and really, really cold and snowy. Um, But if you missed last week, last week we were talking about being good stewards of our time, investing our time in what God wants us to do. It's not... Spending time, it's not wasting time. We're investing time. What are you going to do with the time that God has given you? We are not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed today. And so what are you going to do that will bring benefit to the kingdom for what God wants to do? How are you going to spend that time? And, and And I shared that doesn't mean we don't watch TV or we don't read our favorite book or we don't, you know, play, I don't even know what the cool game on, on, uh, the phones is now, you know, it used to be the, uh, what was the, Candy Crush used to be, I see, I, don't, I never played it. I got frustrated after like level seven. Doesn't mean you don't do that. Doesn't mean you don't go exercise or do things that are beneficial to you. But how are you investing your time? Are you doing something for the kingdom? Are you investing the time that you have for the way that God wants us to do? And so, so this week we're jumping ahead. We're doing um, our second week of stewardship more than giving. And, and there's another thing that God has gifted us with. Uh, that we are called to use for the kingdom, and that's exactly that. It's our gifts. It's our talents. And, and now, now, sometimes when you talk about gifts, um, people automatically lean towards spiritual gifts, which in, in our denomination, we don't believe that spiritual gifts are the evidence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That is not a Nazarene thing. But we do believe that God gifts us each uniquely to do things for the kingdom. And so how are we spending our gifts? How are we using our gifts? How are we investing in our gifts? So if you have your Bible with you, um, and if not, the words will be on the screen. We're in 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, and and would you stand together as we read this, if you are able, for the reverence of the reading of God's word. We are in 1 Peter chapter 4. We are in verses 10 through 11. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11 says, God has given Each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Christ Jesus. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. God, we thank you that you are the creator God, you created us each so unique and so different. And and God, you've created us with unique gifts that you desire to use for the kingdom that would benefit others. And so, God, I pray that this morning you would speak through me. God, move me out of the way. May they hear, may we hear your voice. May we hear your call and your challenge for us to be good stewards of the gifts that you have given us that would bring benefit to those who hear and those who experience, that it would bring glory to God forever and ever. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God has given you each a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Amen. Thank God for that. We are not robots. Although Morgan and Morgan likes to play robot at times, and so mommy and daddy are robots at times at the house, but we're not. We are not robots. We are not the same. If everybody was David, man, this world would be really boring. And nobody would be able to get a word in edgewise because I like to talk. But, but we are all unique. We are all different. And God has blessed us. Blessed us with gifts that he desires to use for the kingdom. And all of our gifts are not the same. And that's a good thing. So, so when you see somebody else 
doing something. I know none of you are envious of what I get to do up here. Like, let's just be honest. None of y'all are like, man, I would love to be preaching right now. That is just the number one thing. When, when we see somebody that is doing something incredible for the kingdom, we don't have to be envious of it. Because God has given you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Last week I shared, um, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I shared a, a thing from a show called Ted Lasso about not dwelling on the past, being a goldfish. And then last week I talked about, uh, I, I preached on being a good steward of your time, and then Wednesday night I got a goldfish <laughs> to put in my office. And it sits in my office, um, and it is unbelievable. It is crocheted. And, and here's the thing. This is not my gifting. I did not make this. I could not make this if I tried a thousand times. There's no way. I'm going to put him right there. Um, there's no way. No, I am not creative like that. Bless God, there are people who are. Because if not, we wouldn't have cool crocheted things like that. You know, the, 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 the gifts that God has given are, are, are not for our benefit. They're for the benefit of others. And I'm thankful for the person who made that for me because it is a constant reminder. I looked at it every day this week. It's over by my bust of John Wesley that reminds me I'm Nazarene. Um, this goldfish, like, when I make a mistake, you know what? Don't dwell on it. Have a 10-second memory. Keep moving forward. Keep going. Use what God is calling us to use. And, and so God has given us these unique and important gifts for our community and for the kingdom of God. You heard me say a couple of weeks ago, my phrase for, for the year is, in champagne as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come in champagne as it is in heaven. God, this is about your community. It's about your people. This is why we do what we do. It's why we use the gifts we give. And, and, and it's not for our benefit. Joni and I went to see a movie. This wasn't actually in the initial writing of the sermon because we hadn't seen the movie yet. But Joni and I went to see a movie on Thursday. It was a date day instead of a date night because we have kids. Uh, but we went to see a movie. It's called Boys in the Boat. And Boys in the Boat is a story of the 1936 University of Washington eight-man crew rowing team. And they went on to, to go to the Olympics in 1936 in Berlin, and in front of Hitler won the gold medal. Uh, this, it's Bobby Mock, who was the coxswain, Don Hume, Joe Rance, George Hunt, Jim McMillan, Johnny White, Gordy Adam, Chuck Day, and Roger Morris. These were guys that were poor. They had nothing. They go to the University of Washington, and a lot of them joined the rowing team because it came with a part-time job, which meant they would have money, and they would have a bed. And, and, and here's this thing, like, they did the impossible. But you, you see, the thing that most people don't understand is, is rowing is not just a brute strength thing. It is a skill. It's a gift. People, not everybody can jump in a skull or a shell and just go. It's not a thing. And so, I mean, you could go, but you'd probably tip over. Uh, God had gifted these people. They did the impossible. They beat teams that were just radically more experienced than they were because they had a gift that God had given them. They used it, and, and, and it brought great joy to the American people. I was, I was, the movie was incredible. I would highly recommend it. It is a true story. It's based on a true story. Obviously, there are creative liberties in there. Um, or if you're a reader, there's a book um, called The Boys in the Boat. Uh, but I've always been fascinated by rowing. It's, I told Joni, if, if I could, like, do over, quote, unquote, like, like when I was a kid, I would love to get into rowing. There's so, there's so much beauty about it. Here's this boat that's going radically fast, and yet when you look at the water around it, it's glass. It's just gliding over the top of it. It's so beautiful. And there's rhythm, and there's, there's you know, the teamwork aspect of it, all eight people working together as one. That was one of the coolest lines in the movie. You know, he's, the movie is based on Joe Rance, but it's also based on the crew. But they said something about, um, you know, how did you all eight work together? And he said, we weren't eight, we were one. And it's one group, one row, one stroke, and it's just fascinating. It takes nine people. Yes, there are eight rowers, but there's a coxswain. There are nine people, all unique and all different, with different tasks and different gifts, working together to accomplish a purpose. And I didn't know a ton about rowing. I mean, I watch it every year in the Olympics. I'm an Olympic fiend. I can't wait for Paris. I'm like, you will not hear from me from two weeks. Like, if you call, text, I'm sorry. It's on silent. I just, I stay up 24-7 watching the Olympics. I'm, it's, I'm an Olympic nut. It's weird. Uh, Joni, <laughs> our, our DVR gets full, and Joni's like, she doesn't even see me. Uh, but an eight-crew rowing is broken down into this. There are 
There are two, they call them the bow pair. They're at the bow of the boat. They're the most technical of rowers. These are things that I learned when I looked this up. The most technical of rowers, they balance the boat. Because of that boat, as that boat goes up and down, they have to be able to balance that and keep it going in a straight, in a straight setting. Three is less technical and less powerful, but equally important for balance and power because it's kind of the in-between seat. Seats four through six, they're, they're the engine. They're the power guys. They're, they're the ones that are really driving the boat. They're the strongest of the rowers. Seat seven is incredibly important. It sits behind the stroke, and it relays the stroke's rhythm to the other six rowers. So he's kind of the translator. Then you have the stroke. He's right up in front of the coxswain, and he's the one who drives it. When the coxswain says, give me 35, he's the one who's, boom, he's given 35 strokes. He knows, and then the coxswain steers and calls out the cadence. If any one person doesn't do their job, that thing's going everywhere, or it's going under, or they're not. Everybody is equally unique and different. Just because the bow pair may not be the strongest doesn't mean they're not important to that boat. Just The coxswain is the littlest person, praise God. They're lightweight. They sit in the front. But equally important, each one of you has a unique gift. You may not be the strongest. You may not be the youngest anymore. You may not be the, the super technical or the super musical or the super crocheable. But you are unique and gifted, and God wants to use you to bring glory to him and And to bless the community, it takes all of us. If Grace Church of the Nazarene is going to be impactful in the community, it's not going to be because Pastor David does it. I'm sorry, I am not gifted like that. It's going to take you in your setting, at your workplace, in your neighborhood, connecting with people here, connecting with people at the gym, connecting with people at the supermarket, using your gifts for the kingdom. Now, I've never been a rower, but I did experience something where everything was different. Some of you know I spent a few years on the U.S. bobsled team. I raced internationally, and, and everybody always asks, what pusher were you? I was, on, I was a side pusher. I was 2-3. I wasn't a driver, praise God, because we would have rolled over. It would not have gone well. And I wasn't the brakeman, because the brakeman was super fast. They were the last one to get in, and so I had to be the fastest person, because that sled is going like 25 miles an hour at that point, and it's like a runaway train. And if you can't get in, you can't get in. I was a side pusher. I was part of the engine. I wasn't a driver. I wasn't a brakeman. And that was okay because I did my part. I did what I was supposed to do. And the driver did what they were supposed to do. They got us down safe most of the time. And the brakeman did what they were supposed to do. They gave us that last little oomph getting us going as we got down and loaded in. Each one of us is called to do our part. Don't do my part. And I don't want to do your part. Joni and I talk all the time. She, for those of you who don't know, she was, she's a nurse. She works in labor and delivery and postpartum. Never, ever, 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 cannot say ever enough do I ever want to deliver a baby again. Saw it one time, scarred me for life. Nope, can't do it. That is not my gifting. That's her gifting. And if we were to trade places, she's an introvert by nature. She, God, is, man, she, God just blesses her like crazy. She is super, I, I wake out, kick my coverage. Um, best pastor's wife I could ever ask for. She is just unbelievable. But she would not want to be up here preaching. Like, let's just be real. Like, you can ask her after service. Wouldn't happen. That is not what she wants to do. And I don't want to be a labor and delivery nurse. If we traded places, it'd be, it'd be bad. Use your gifts. Do your part. God is doing something in this church in 2024. He is moving and he is working. And you may not be like, man, I love children. Children are my favorite thing. You know what? That's okay. You don't have to work with the kids. You may, may, you may need to go serve them some juice or something during kids club at some point. But you don't have to teach them. Like, use your gifts. You may just be overjoyed by hanging out with old people. Like, we, we've got plenty of nursing homes around here that you can go and bless people with. Maybe your thing is you love to read. There are kids that need to be read to. I hate reading. I don't know why I'm doing a dissertation. I have to read so much for a doctorate, and I hate reading. If you love reading, go read to people. Maybe, maybe, you know, you, 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 I don't know, you like to crochet or play music or, you know, bless people by, we we have somebody in our church who loves to mow grass and mows grass all the time for people. I don't mind it, but I'm not just like, man, I am dying to mow my grass today. Like, and he goes and mows people's grass, and I think they pay him a little bit, but he does it because he loves them and he wants to bless them. Maybe that's your gift. I don't know. But God has given you unique gifts. 
unique gifts that he's choosing and desiring for you to use to benefit the kingdom, not to shelve them. I've talked to some people in the past, and you know, they they've shared, you know, that, that when they became a Christian, you know, they kind of went all in for Christ. And, and we've talked about before, we want to be all in for Jesus, right? Like he's calling us to be all in, no hold, no holds back, you know, compassionate, committed, sacrificial, and surrendered. We're called to be all in. And so they're like, but my gifts aren't like church related. So like we shelve them. Like, like that does not, that's, that doesn't benefit the church, right? It's not like being a worship pastor or a Sunday school teacher or, you know, cooking for our gather at the table or what, like that's not my gift. So I just, I kind of put it on the shelf and like, that's not beneficial for, for God. That's, that's the world. But you see, God doesn't call us to use our gifts for the church. He calls us to give our, use our gifts for the community. And so, so your gift may not benefit the church. It may not be worship music. It may not be, may not be tech in the back. It may not be being a Sunday school teacher or a children's church teacher or, <clears throat> or a, a nursery worker. It may not be being a custodian or anything. That may not be your gift, but that doesn't mean that God is not desiring to use it. He did not give you a gift for you to not use it. God doesn't do that. He doesn't give you passions that you're not supposed to use. I love sports. God did not give me a love of sports so that I could go to book club. That is not a thing. God gave me a love of sports so that I could connect with other people who love sports. God gives you a love of books so that you can connect with other people who love books. God gave you a love of cooking so that you can connect with other people who love cooking and golf and basketball and so on and so forth. Don't ever get between me and somebody else who loved the Olympics. Like, you're not going to get a word in edgewise. We talk for hours. It's crazy. He gave you gifts to benefit the community, not the church. Luke 12, 48 says, to whom much is given, much is required. That means that Since God has given you gifts, the requirement is that we use them. And so so for us in this stewardship series, what does it mean to steward your gifts well? To invest in them. Really and truly, if we want to think about it right, God has given us everything. New life, hope, joy, peace, the ability to be exactly who he wants us to be that would benefit others in the kingdom. You've heard me, uh, I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again next week. <clears throat> Matthew 25, it's a parable of the talents, right? Five, two, and one. Servants, I'm leaving. Take it, I'll be back. And we know that the fifth, the, the person who was given five, you know, saw the investment, invested well, saw the return. The one who was given two, invested well, saw the return, and the one who had won, buried it, and saw no return. Are we burying our gifts? Are we burying our gifts because we feel like they're not impactful for the kingdom? Are we burying our gifts because we're afraid to use them? Are we burying our gifts because it's inconvenient or I'm tired or I'm <clears throat> fill in the blank? I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. Here, I, I, I go to the gym. I used to go to the gym way more often. I'm being good in 2024. I'm trying to, I'm approaching 40, y'all. And apparently when you hit 40, like, it's all downhill, literally including, like, the ability to stay in shape. So I'm trying to get ahead of the curve. So I've been going to the gym a lot. And and let me tell you, there are some people there with some snow on the roof. So don't tell me you're too old to do something because I see it every day. There are people in there, like, doing cardio and weights, and I'm going, like, you're what? Um, Okay. Like, God, you're not too old or too young or too whatever to use your gift. Don't bury it. Because we know that when the master came back, the one who had buried, he was scolded for it and it was taken from him. I don't want to see you or me bury our gifts. And God go, man, that's not what I had intended for you. I just wish you would have done what you were supposed to do with that. You see, the blessing of of using our gifts, it, it does, it blesses others. But man, we receive a blessing from it. Have you, ever, have you ever seen God show up in a way as you were doing something that you didn't think was anything spectacular? <clears throat> and God shows up, and you're just like, wow, that's incredible. When God shows up, that is the blessing that we receive when we use the gifts and the talents God has given us. 
Maybe it's speaking. Maybe it's helping others. Maybe it's being an encourager. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's tech. Whatever your gift is, use it for the kingdom. Use it for the community. Use it for our neighbors. This is going to sound crazy. If you're a golfer, go play golf. If you miss a Sunday because you're playing golf and you're ministering to people who aren't in church on Sunday, I'm not going to scold you for it. Just watch the sermon online later. Go. There are people in the community who are not in the kingdom. I would be foolish if I would be like, you're, you need to be in church on Sunday because that's the only place you need to be. No. There are people at the gym on Sundays. There are people at the grocery store on Sundays. There are people on the golf course on Sundays. There are people at the library on Sundays. There are people who are not here on Sunday. And as much as, yes, I want you to, now this is not telling you, like, take the next 52 weeks and go play golf every Sunday. Like, I, you are a vital part of this church community. We want you here, but... Don't waste your gifts in here when God wants us to use them out there. I'm going to make an assumption that the majority of the people that are in here, or at least a large majority of the people in here, have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're part of the kingdom. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if you haven't, I would love to talk to you about it. It's where you can get life abundant, life greater than anything you could ever ask or imagine, where we talk about this God who loves you more than anything you could ever dream. But if you have a relationship with Jesus, then being here, you're already in the fold. You're already in the 99. And there's one out there that is desperately longing for something and they don't know what. And you have that. You have the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said there's a God who loves you and he gave himself for you. But we can't tell him if we don't go. They can't, if we're never there. So all these people who are Playing golf on Sundays or working out on Sunday mornings or doing what everybody in church is in church. They may never get to hear that. So I'm giving you permission. If God points you to do something like that on a Sunday morning, you don't even have to come and ask me. Say, hey, you know what? I'm playing golf Sunday. Pray that pray that God would put me in a foursome. That's four hours of captive audience. You ever thought about that? How glorious is that? Or whatever it is, do something for the kingdom. To whom much is given, much is required. Maybe your gift's cooking. I love to cook. I love to bake, clearly. Um, we're working on that. You ever thought about cooking for your neighbors, your coworkers? Cookies are a love language, people. They are. Physical touch, acts of service, you know, words of encouragement, quality time, cookies, like sweets. It is. It's a love language. Maybe it's baking cookies for your neighbors. Hey, I just want you to know that Joni and I love you. We, we, we're so glad to be your neighbors. You know, if you ever need anything, let us know. Hey, it's so great working with you. I just enjoy being at the workplace with you. I just wanted to bake you some cookies. We were baking some and just wanted to give them out. Maybe your gift is whatever. I don't know. But the reality is God has gifted you with, with talents and abilities and things that he desires to use. So my prayer for you this week is that we would pray and ask God, how do you want to use my gifts? If you're 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or even 96, praise God, he is not done with you yet. And he wants to use your gifts and your abilities to bless the socks off of somebody that's not inside these walls, that doesn't get to know us on a regular basis. <clears throat> whether an eight-man crew team, four-man bobsled team, part of a swimming team, or running relay, if one person, one person doesn't do their job, the, the, the goal isn't accomplished. Which means that if, if we are going to see God do what I believe God wants to do through us in 2024, it's going to take all of us. It's going to take all of us. It's going to take account of, hey, how, how's that work? How, how are you... How's God doing? What's he doing through you? And I want you guys to ask me. Let's be accountable to, to each other. How are you investing your time? How are you investing your gifts and your talents? And, and that's not a scolding if we've had a bad week and we're like, man, this week was just bad. I did not do anything. Use it as an encouragement. Hey, next week, tomorrow's another day. 
Let's pray and ask God how to do this. Let's pray and ask God how he wants to use us. Because there's a goal to be accomplished, and that's that people in our community would come to know Jesus as in heaven, here on earth. In Champaign as, in, as it is in heaven. You are way, way too valuable for the kingdom to shelve yourself. Way, way too valuable to take a day off. You are way too valuable to say, you know what, my gift can't be used by God. You are a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do the works, good works, that he prepared in advance for you to do. You're a masterpiece. That means you're exactly who you need. You are beyond valuable. And God wants to use you and me and us to transform lives, to build the kingdom here in Champaign as it is in heaven, to be love and to be grace and to be mercy, to be hope, to be joy, overflowing, Romans 15, 13, overflowing with hope, that people in this world would come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Are you willing to take those gifts and talents off the shelf? Maybe they need a little dusting off. You know, when, when Joni and I clean the house, there are times where we dust and we're like, oh, maybe it needs a little dusting off. Put it back into the use that it's supposed to be. Maybe, maybe you've put yourself on the shelf. You're like, ah, I'm getting old, or I'm busy, or fill in the blank. Maybe you need to take yourself off the shelf. Say, God, you know what? Use me. Do what you want with me. Use me however you want to build the kingdom that you would be glorified. All glory and honor to God the Father forever and ever. It ain't about us. It's about Him. It's not about us. It's about them. It's not about here. It's about the kingdom coming here. God, we thank you for today. I thank you that you, God, you remind us that we are called to use our gifts. Thank you for a movie that reminded me that I am a vital part of an eight-man crew boat that is doing things for the kingdom. And sometimes I'm the, the, the power guy and sometimes I'm the dude that is the smallest in the boat just yelling out orders. I don't know. But God, you want to use me to build the kingdom, to bless others. God, I know that you have gifted each and every person who is here in person, those that are watching online, those that will watch this later on. God, you gifted us each uniquely and differently to build the kingdom where we live. Our address is not an accident. You have put us here in Champaign in 2024 to be a light for the kingdom, to be hope overflowing. God, I pray that you would help us to, to re-engage to, to, to pull the gift off the shelf and say, you know what, it may have, I may have put it on the shelf because I felt like it was not useful for the church, but God, it's not about the church. So I want you to use it, whether it's, whether it's you know, sports or, or, or books or cooking or whatever it is. Maybe it's just going and loving on people. There are a lot of people in our community that need to be loved. So God, I pray that you would do it. And, I, and God, I ask that you would help us to be accountable on how we're investing our time how we're investing our gifts and our talents. Not in a critical way. God, that we wouldn't come up and be like, I can't believe, you know. But God, that, that it would be an encouraging, hey, tomorrow's another day, let's do this thing. I'm going to pray that God shows up in a way that only you can do what God wants you to do. God, would you put someone in our path this week that needs something specific from us, the gifting that you've given us. Nobody else. God, give us the ability and the willingness to say, yes, Lord. And God, I pray that the blessing received from it on the other side would be transformational eternally and generationally that lives would be transformed. But I pray that the blessing that would be received from, that, that we receive from saying yes to you would be just absolutely contagious beyond measure. We would, we would come back and go, you're never going to believe what God did. And it would challenge us and encourage us to do the same again. And it would just snowball. So that God, on, on December 31st, 2024, we can say, your kingdom come in Champagne as it is in heaven, is happening. And God, we've been gracious 
and grateful and thankful to be a part of it. Use us this week to do what you want to do and help us to invest our gifts and our talents in ways that are beneficial for the kingdom. And we will praise you and thank you because you alone are worthy of it. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad you were here this week. I'm excited for what God's going to do through you and in you for others and for the kingdom if you're willing to say yes, Lord. I am, I am just blessed beyond measure with the, the unbelievable gifts and talents that you guys have that I don't. And that means God is going to use you where he can't use me. And I'm thankful for that because there are a lot of lives that will be transformed if we say yes. <clears throat> don't forget next Saturday. So team day is next Saturday. If you want to go, I'm driving down. We can ride. Um, it's in Salem. It's like three hours south. Uh, it's kind of a leadership day, um, NDI, NMI, NYI leadership. For those of you who aren't Nazarene, that's missions, Sunday school, and youth. Um, but it's also just like general leadership on how to, how to be vital to the church, how to be vital for the community. Um, I think it's 10 or $15, covers the cost of meal. Uh, if you want to go, let us know. Um, also, next Sunday is Baptism Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. That's exciting. We also are going to be receiving membership. So if you've never been baptized and you're like, man, I feel like God is leading me to be baptized, I'd love to talk with you. Even if we can't get it done next week, we're going to do another one in three months. And so we're going to have Baptism Sunday on a regular basis because we're going to believe that God is going to bring people in who are going to make that personal decision that says, you know what, God? I'm in. I'm going to follow you in baptism and obedience. And so we're going to do that. If you're not a member of the church and you're like, I'm curious what that means. I'd love to talk to you and we can talk about what being a member is. You've got to be 16 years of age or older um, in order to be a member in the Church of the Nazarene, but we'd love to talk to you. Uh, but more so than that, you don't have to be a member or be baptized to come and be a part of this community. So I'm thankful. Next, uh, Not next week, but the following week, the 4th of February, is Gather at the Table. It's our once a month potluck we like to eat. And so we, we come and we celebrate communion at the Lord's table, and then we gather at the table together and we fellowship and we eat. You don't have to worry about bringing anything. If you invite somebody, tell them that, I mean, if they want to cook, bring it. But they don't ha it's not a requirement to bring something. There will be plenty of food. And we'd just love to have you guys come and to, uh, to, to fellowship and to, to just spend some time together. So uh, with that, would you stand and receive this blessing as we go? If you have not received your giving statement, I have them up here. I will meet you in the back and we'll hand them out. But may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may he make his face to shine upon you. May his grace fall on you like a, just a beautiful, beautiful rain. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace this week. Amen. So good to be with you today.